Today we're back in the garage for part two of the IAT sensor shootout, cheap versus expensive. We're going to hook them up to the data logger and see what the results say. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and we just did a video comparing the Rife IAT sensor to the cheapest one I could find on Amazon that was, it was like 12 bucks with a lead on it. I'm going to throw a link to that video somewhere in the corner wherever it shows up I think over there. Nonetheless you can find that thing and a lot of you guys had a lot of good feedback and things on that. Essentially what we did on that was a static temperature test where we took a reading at ambient, brought the temperature sensor down to a low reading, and saw how long it took. What we're going to do now is we've got both of these in one intake duct. We're going to throw it into the Typhoon, hook it up to the fuel tech, and everything is the same. The wire links are the same. I've checked, made sure all the resistance and stuff is good. Even where we spliced in our connectors is the same. Our location is in the same location of the duct. We're going to see how these two perform head to head on a data log. Now, you need to be aware of a couple things whenever it comes to claims of fast reaction, higher resolution, things like that. Uh, Technically, like the higher resolution stuff is a little bit iffy because it has an extended range on the Rife sensor. The GM sensor goes up to about 350, the Rife sensor goes up to about 450, and you're talking about the same resistance range overall that is converted in our case to a fuel take over to a voltage reading, and that's always gonna be zero to five volts. So if you have 350 volts and you're putting it in zero to five volts, you have this many declinations in between each. If you have 450, you've got more points in there that you have to cram, cram, cram into the same amount of analog range. Now, it gets a little bit tricky whenever we talk about temperature sensors because they are not linear. It'd be one thing if it were linear, it would be a lot easier to compare this stuff and because of that, the Rife sensor has a different curve on it. Okay, had to go hush up the dogs. Well, as I was saying, it would be a lot easier if this was a linear curve, it would be a one-to-one -one comparison, but it is not. There is a slope to it. And down in the flat part of the slope, in fact, let's just jump over to the laptop and take a look at it from there. It'll be easier with a graph in front of us. Okay, so here we have our stock GM temperature sensor resistance versus temperature in here. And you can see kind of the curve in here. And the ideal zone is, is right here in the middle of the curve. And the reasoning behind that is we get more of a linear one-to-one -one kind of change where a change in resistance is gonna relate more closely to a change in temperature. As we get out to one end or the other, something is gonna happen. Specifically, if we go down to the low end, we're going to see a larger resistance change for a smaller temperature change. That's actually gonna be higher resolution down there. Whereas we get out to the top end, we're going to see a larger temperature change for a smaller resolutions change. And so we're starting to really get out there where uh, maybe point, you know, one resistance or 0.1 ohms is going to equal 25 or 30 degrees, whereas down low, it's going to be a lot smaller. And so your ideal range, your operating range, you know, if you're say between 70 and 150, that's kind of where you want to get the best of both worlds, as it were. You want the most resolution for your curve at that time. If we look at the Rife one, they don't actually have a curve, which kind of sucks. It would make it a lot easier to compare one to one. But we can see down here in the low temperatures, huge resistance changes down there, like negative 10 to one, one to 12, we're seeing like 13 or 132,000 ohms to 90,000 ohms to 62,000 ohms. That's a lot of resistance just to change 10 degrees. Very, very high resolution down low. Then whenever we get out to the top end, you can see 157 ohms to 132 ohms, you know, uh, what, 22 ohms or 25 ohms, something like that, is now a 15 degree change. So a lot more like temperature versus resistance out there. Now, if we were to look in our operational range, and this is what kind of peeves me about the Rive sensors, they changed this to go up high into above 100 degrees. And that's where that, that meat of the curve would be in there, where you're starting to see reasonable temperature changes versus uh, reasonable resistance changes. 
that's fine. You know, it, it, I say that if you're operating over 145 degrees, call me. I'll hook you up with a sweet deal on a snow, snow methanol injection kit, and let's get those IAT temps down. I don't really care about temperatures above 150 because I don't want to run above 150 unless absolutely necessary. So I, I'm more concerned in that 100 to 130 degree range where I like to operate things at. And, you know, it's it's probably going to be about the same for the GM and the Rive. I'm not going to take the time to plot all this stuff out on a curve and compare the curves one to one and show you where the higher resolution comes into the Rive, but it's not going to make a difference in our situation or your situation. So the question that really I want to ask is whether or not these things respond faster. That's the big claim. Oh, you know, it responds faster. Higher resolution, we've kind of thrown that to the wayside. We've explained that we've got more data points in the same analog range, which means that it is not higher resolution. Uh, just because it reads more degrees in temperature doesn't make it a higher resolution sensor. No, it's actually the output of the sensor to the ECU that's going to determine the resolution, not the sensor range itself. Okay, so here we have it. We've got all of our stuff wired in. I couldn't find my IR camera, so I'm running a uh, fluke meter with a uh, thermocouple on it. So it should give us a decent reading. We're reading around 74 and a half to 75 degrees. Okay, we've got it fired up. As I said, on the fluke meter, we are reading around 74, 75. On here, you can see IAT3 is reading 70. That's gonna be the Rife sensor. And then IAT1 is gonna be 75. So IAT1, uh, which is our uh, cheap GM, is reading 75. The one in the air intake is 71.8. That's post turbo, we'll, we'll ignore that one. Let's go ahead and fire it up, see if we can get this thing to idle. Okay, we got about 78 degrees on the fluke meter. We're showing 74 on the Rife and 79.2 on the GM. Let me check. We're only, uh, we're not getting a decimal on the Rife. Let me see if I can change that. Uh, right now we're showing the GM IAT sensor up to 100 degrees, the IAT3, which is our Rife at 93.7. Let me go check the fluke. And the fluke's at 92 and a half. So once again, the GM sensor seems to be a little bit closer. Let's get some heat into it. So, had a data point fat fingered on the Rife sensor that caused it to not read right. I had to go back through and update that. And essentially I copied the temperature over to two resistances, caused it to flatline, uh, which sucks because uh, I reran the test and I did the test a little bit differently, so we're going to get some better data, I hope. But interestingly enough, you can see right here we started off, uh, we're skewed off quite a bit 130 on the GM and 95.7 on the uh, Rife whenever we started off. That's quite a bit. Uh, as we go through here, we should see hopefully they kind of come closer together. You can see the response is almost spot on. Funny enough, where we peaked out like way off, 194.9 degrees on the GM, 155 on the Rife. Ugh, man, I don't know. The curves are following each other fairly well. You can see if I bring the RPMs up on here, uh, I am I'm giving it the revs, man. Bringing it up, giving it the revs. And if we look at, let's see if we can bring in, we'll take out our, that one, let's bring in our air temperature and show you kind of the curve on our air temperature, which this is post intercooler, so it's flat. We're reading about 127 degrees post intercooler. We're getting up to 130, and that's saying that we've got 154 going in, 194 going in. It's very interesting, very interesting. I think we're gonna have to do more research on this. The tail of the tape, the data logger as it is, the response curves look fairly the same. The only thing that kind of bugs me is, notice we peek out here, 
And if you look down there, that's at 145. That's right whenever I let off the throttle and go back into idle. Look at the response. The GM drops off, whereas the Rife actually drops off for a second and then goes back up while the GM is still losing temperature. So it's almost like the GM sheds temperature quicker. They seem to pick up temperature about the same rate. I'd almost say that the GM picks up temperature a little bit faster, but the scaling is what's got me off. It's, it just looks wrong. Maybe I need to double check my points to make sure that it's set up right. Maybe this is what they're talking about on the Rife sensor that it's more accurate. I wish I had, I gotta find my thermal camera, I guess. Something, even though it's not the best way of telling. Like we know whenever we put the probes in a static temperature like ambient, and then put it in the cooler and dropped it down to about 30 degrees, they read the same there. And that's going the opposite direction. Maybe we need to boil water and put both of them in, in boiling water or something like that. Go on the high side and see if they read that way. So I think, and you'll probably agree with me, that we need a third session of this video to test these sensors out even more. I'm just afraid the boiling water will probably kill the GMIAT sensor. The Rife, I have no doubts, will, will survive that. But it's just while there is so much difference out here on the top end here, why would that be? Maybe if we take the average of the two and use that as our IAT sensor, we'll have the best of both worlds. Listen, we're just going to try and figure out how to get down to the best data on these, make sure that we're making informed decisions, and maybe I'm changing my mind a little bit. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.